Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Jodie Lee. And welcome back to Lesson 8 Tuesday. So today we're continuing on with the topic um, about how God and us interact um, as he's trying to educate us um, and the role that he and us play. And the title for today is called Moses and the Prophets, right? Um, and it starts off with 2 Timothy 3 verse 14 to 17, which you guys must go read. But I'm going to just summarize it for you. And basically what it's saying is that um, all scripture is inspired and it's useful to teach us and educate us, right? That's a, it's a paraphrase, so you got to go read it to check I'm not lying to you. But basically what it's kind of saying is that God's scripture is there to teach us okay um, and so it kind of the lesson kind of compa compared it to a textbook I don't mm. know how exciting does that sound to you brands no textbooks are traditionally in my mind boring books <laughs> that you're forced to read yeah it's not that yeah. exciting novel that you want to pick up so that doesn't, uh, no, it doesn't invoke hey. <laughs> any positive emotions when I hear that yeah like I was a nerd so I also kind of uh, you would think that I'd be excited about reading a textbook, but no, I wasn't that much of a nerd. Um, so it wasn't that exciting to me. But then the lesson went and was like, it's not your traditional textbook. Your traditional mm. textbook either just tells you what happened or like has a bunch of formulas, mm. but God knows how we learn, right? And so in his textbook, he included so many different ways um, to teach us, right? So in the beginning, we've got uh, the Torah, yeah? Sorry, I just wanted to say, and traditionally textbooks are written by like one person yeah. or by one publishing organization yeah. with a number of editors but it's always like very confined to like that group you know yes. this is written over uh, 4,000 years it's written by some kings like David you have uh, you have leaders like Moses you know like ex-royalty fugitives oh, yeah. it's also written by uh, by shepherds it's written by poor men it's written by rich men it's written by people in like three major different languages Hebrew yes. Aramaic uh, Greek, Greek yeah. it's written by so many people with different viewpoints people who are ex-murderers people who are ex uh, tax collectors people that were hated people that were heroes but they all have one thing in common and that is that is so amazing that like uh, it's just it's evident that God is a God that can change people uh -huh. because you have a hundred different background stories of dozens of different authors but at the end they all have the same viewpoints and and only God can tunnel people's vision not tunnel in like a negative way but focus let me say them. focus it yeah, yeah like a lens only God can focus people's vision like that to the point where everyone can like agree on one thing regardless of where they came from I think that's, that's so cool. No, it's so cool, yeah. And I think that's also what makes it relatable, And right? across three different continents? I think so. Africa, Asia, and Europe. Yeah, yeah I think so. The, the, yeah, the Greeks and the <laughs> Romans. And then you can go all the way to, like, the Middle East, you know? Yeah. And then you can come all the way to Egypt. That's three different continents yeah. that it was written across. That's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not like this boring textbook. It's like real people's stories. And that's what the lesson touches on. So, in the beginning, when you've got Moses' writings, part of that is instruction ways. He's kind of giving us a guide on how to live our life, like a recipe book. Go back and check out one of our Saturday videos where we taught you how to make the best sandwich. Um, but then after that, we also look and we see how people actually applied these things. So firstly, the, um, the Israelites, when they were in the Exodus, they were leaving. Um, and then after that, we go and see how did Daniel do it? How did David do it? How did Ruth do it? And we go mm. see their life story. So you kind of have like a, a real story, not just like a whole bunch of instructions only. And then we get to Jesus, right? And when he came, um, he told a whole bunch of parables, okay? So I learn better when I hear stories because exactly. it helps me remember it and yeah. Jesus's parables were really cool because he wasn't just telling them about stuff he was telling them about stuff that they did every single day so for us it might seem a bit weird to like plant seeds or like be shepherds yeah. but um, if you go look at the way Jesus did it those people in the day they used to actually farm every day right they had um, they would go and sow the seeds it was and while, relevant to them exactly and while they were sowing the seeds they would be like oh that's what Jesus said you know and so they would learn that way okay and then we even get on to the New Testament where there's the letters right letters of Paul and all bunch of people and they're related to the church yeah. so basically this is not a boring textbook it's really exciting and I want to mm. get you guys to go encourage you guys to go read it yourself stories of warriors like Samson yes we have that's like comic book stuff you know that's like, <laughs> that's exciting you have you have songs in the Psalms you know yes. we have poetry from David we have love letters oh yes um, you talked about Song the of Solomon. <laughs> exactly we we have so many amazing beautiful things you know we even have prophecy you know, yes. so there's everything from the Bible covers everything from history to what's going to happen in the future. And it puts some songs in the middle of it. <laughs> it's like a whole uh, concert. It's like yes. a like a performance, like a Shakespearean play, but even better because it was written by God. Yes. Well, men written, but inspired, but inspired by, God, by the word yes. of God. Yeah. And so basically, I think today it's just like 
to encourage you to go dig into that word and to go and read it. It's not a boring textbook, but it's an amazing resource where you can learn about God, right? Mm. Um, and so the last point we just wanted to touch on that the lesson pointed out is that obviously it was written long ago. And so sometimes it might not seem like something so relevant to us, right? Yeah. So we're going to just read Deuteronomy 17 verse 14, I think it is. Just read the one. verse 14. Yeah. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you and have taken possession of it and settle in it. And you say, let us set a king over us like all the nations around us. Okay, so here's just a, a quick snippet. This is actually based in Deuteronomy. So it's Moses, I think, talking to the people and mm. saying, one day you're going to go to the promised land and you're going to want a king, right? And if I look at that on face value, that maybe doesn't apply to me, right? Yeah. I'm not, I don't really have the power to appoint any kings like over South Africa, you know? Um, <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon. So it doesn't seem like it's relevant to me. So what the lesson touched on is like, you've got to read things in context, okay? If you read in the Bible, you want to go appoint a king over yourself, it doesn't mean you must actually go do it. But that doesn't mean it's not actually relevant to you because if you dig deep into this, Moses is talking about one day they're going to want a king. And if you go see when that one day was, um, at one point in history, the Israelites weren't happy with having um, they just uh, Samuel as the prophet, right? Yes. And so they said, can we please have a king? We want a king. Why do we want a king? Because we want to be like all the other nations. They realized everyone else had a king. Yeah. They didn't. Well, because they had God as their king, but they and were they... like, no, we want a human king. So to me, I can apply that to my life because why did they want a king? Because they wanted to be like everyone else. And often I sacrifice and compromise what God wants for me and the, like the good life he's planned for me because I want to be like everybody else. Exactly. And so that's a principle that we can take from this textbook. So sometimes the textbook's not telling you, go get a king. Sometimes the textbook is not telling you, don't have a king. Sometimes you have to read a little bit deeper and in context and think, okay, how does this apply to my life? And that's kind of an important lesson. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there anything else you want to add? No. Cool. Let's uh, close in prayer. Will you pray for us? Yes, certainly. Cool. Heavenly Father God, we want to thank you, uh, Lord, for everything that you've done for us that has uh, made you fully worthy of being our King, Father God, the only one who has any right to uh, command our hearts, command our minds, and you do it not through force, but by love. You lead us like all leaders should from the front by setting the example. Help us to follow you and uh, not to look to any man to be our ruler or king, but to put all our trust and faith solely in you, Lord. We love you and we pray this in, our, in your wonderful and holy name. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye.